Hello. In this video, I'll be showing a recording of a dive I took on an active oil rig around 100 miles off of the coast of Texas in the Gulf of Mexico. Oil rig had some people on it. It was operating, but still safe to dive. And the rig itself was in some 360 or so feet of water. And we dove on a beautiful day uh, uh, around the first 80 feet or, or so at the top where there were literally tens of thousands of fish living around the base of the rig and the, or the, the pipe work uh, up there um, where they'd made it their home as a form of uh, artificial reef. Now this was part of a three-day trip aboard their MV Fling and this was the third dive of, uh, of the first day. So here I am aboard the fling just climbing up the ladder to the sun deck uh, at the top and you can see the rig itself uh, just appearing uh, over the bow there at this point we were moored up um, and so uh, just getting ready to get in the water um, and uh, yeah you can see it uh, uh, see, see the, the fling bobbing about in the water there and there is uh, there is the rig next up I'll uh, jump in the water. And so begins the third dive of the day. A fabulous rig di a dive uh, on this rig. Uh, just a uh, Following the line amongst a whole slew of the many fish, there's the rig before we started to uh, uh, swim down to it. So we're following the line and uh, my buddy is also videoing just ahead of me on the right down there. And I've included his video up on the top right, sequenced with mine. There he captures me, capturing a video of him, capturing a video of me, capturing a video of him. You can see the rig looming behind both of us. Now this rig was in 360 or so feet of water. And the maximum depth we never got below 50 feet. So we stayed within the top 50 feet of the structure here. But uh, you may be able to see it disappearing into the darkness down below. While up above, it is absolutely teeming with life, as uh, hopefully you can see here. This uh, rig has been here since at least the 90s, uh, still active. Uh, on this day, we were on it, there were people on the rig. There we go, 46 feet, not too deep at all. So, lots and lots of life. Some divers, as you can see down there, went a little deeper. There are some larger, there are some sharks circling around the outside there. So they wanted a good view of those. But uh, as I was saying, this rig is an active one. There were people on it on the day. In fact, I was having a very nice nap up on the sun deck. You saw me uh, show earlier there on the top of the MV Fling during the two hour, 22 minute surface interval between the second dive uh, earlier in this day. And I was woken up by a helicopter coming in to land with some folks evidently for this rig. It landed on the uh, helipad. I looked down there into the gloom 300 feet down. You can't, can't see any deeper than that, but... It was a long way down and very exhilarating uh, to, to dive because you could see this vast structure, which hopefully you can see from the two different angles here from both my buddy Ken, who's very close to me, and uh, my main video. Lots of barge acts there, a vast shoal that Ken noticed as well and caught some video off. There we go. Yeah, this uh, rig, not only we heard we saw the helicopter land on it, but 
it also there's my buddy Ken so he uh, he stayed close to me the whole dive as usual and uh, captured some similar stunning steens so I'm uh, including them top right for a few minutes during this video first 10 minutes or so uh, there's me uh, caught by Ken's video on the top right videoing the gantry structures there you can see uh, wore a dry suit for this uh, dive it was around 79 at the surface and uh, about 77 degrees uh, at 50 feet so relatively cool uh, a 5 mil wetsuit would be normally what I'd be wearing if I was wearing a wetsuit I prefer my dry suit it is more comfortable so went with that uh, for this entire trip uh, in fact and I was very glad of it just wearing a body X by the same manufacturer as a dry suit uh, waterproof underneath it tops and bottoms and uh, I was I was toasty uh, in these temperatures uh, very comfortable some close-ups of all of the uh, growth on the structure of the rig here a lot of things living on it so I think it's uh, the third time I've dived this rig uh, and one of my favorite dives you can see Ken to the left there as well as his video to the top right uh, this time was just uh, lovely there was just so much uh, life and the water was exceptionally clear you can see over 100 feet visibility there easily and no current at all to speak of uh, beautiful weather up top uh, not too uh, so easy to get in and out and uh, you can see there's around uh, 30 divers the entire uh, entire payload it were of the MV fling uh, on the rig at this time we all pretty much went down together and while I was looking down there you can see uh, Ken caught a lovely shot looking up towards the surface from he was very close to me which I uh, think captured the scene nicely he's captured the uh, the middle of the rig there all the pipe work going down to the bottom Divers, uh, bubbles from divers below, bubbling up here. The uh, rig made no discernible sound that we could hear. On the surface, when there's no one there, a foghorn sounds. We can't hear that under the water. That was my experience on the previous dives of this rig, but because the rig was active, there was no foghorn. Well, people act by active, I mean people on the rig and so no foghorn up top but no noise down below either but you can hear the engines of the MV fling running which was not the case uh, on the other dives we did on the coral uh, of this trip because she needed to uh, be able to maneuver because she was uh, so close more so close to the rig just in case so she left her engines running and uh, a watch at all times make sure she didn't inadvertently get too close especially when we were ascending because there's a, a line that we ascended you can you'll be able to see it at the end that we were careful not to pull on as we uh, came back up because uh, too many people pulling on that line is actually able to pull the boat towards the rig so we were careful to uh, not pull on the rope and instead use it uh, just as a guide uh, so for that reason you are able to hear the rumbling of the MV flings engine from below on this video incredible vibrant colors are on this rig and it's situated just outside of uh, the flower garden banks in the Gulf of Mexico. Selfie of Ken there. He's, uh, he's okay.
Like I say, just outside of Flower Garden Banks, which was the uh, trip that we did for three days over Memorial Day weekend in May 2023. Eleven dives in all, including two night dives, and this was uh, the interim stop between uh, two areas of uh, Flower Garden Banks, west and then east, uh, on the first day, which was uh, five dives in all, this being the third. Some more Creval Jacks. They were really huge fish. I'm sure it's easy to see them in the video, but uh, yeah, they were big. You can see how small the divers look in amongst the gantry over there, how clear the water is, and all the thousands of fish that uh, were swimming amongst it. Looking down there into 300 feet below, we were at 50 feet at this point, so that's around 300 feet to the bottom. Can't see it, too dark. It was very exhilarating diving. Uh, being amongst this huge structure with all these fish and that huge descent of all the pipework into the depths like that. Very, uh, very exhilarating. Definitely one of my favourite dives of this trip. Now we were careful not to touch all of the uh, growth on the rig. Um, as this one is not actually in the flower garden banks, it's not protected in the same way the flower garden banks is. And that uh, we are not to touch the reefs in the flower garden banks. Uh, but uh, still, we left them alone so that others may enjoy them, protected status or not. So many fish, thousands, countless. Deliberately stayed relatively shallow on this dive, like I say, no deeper than 50 feet, uh, in order to get uh, better lighting for the video so we can uh, hopefully do, find it easier to capture all the life. This side, the sun was shining on it, which hopefully you can see makes it even more lovely. And the water really was just astonishingly clear. See that diver far below. Not everyone feels the cold. You saw that diver there in just a shorty. point that my buddy can had enough videoing for one dive at least for now so he turned off his camera so continue with uh, the video that I uh, that I continued to shoot just see the surface there from 50 feet down Easily visible. Like I say, one of my favourite dives. Can continue to explore close by. I continue to try and get uh, close to all of this life, trying to capture the colour. Total was, as I think I mentioned, uh, 48 feet. And I was diving on nitrox once again to make sure I was staying easily within the no deco limits. Nitrox being regular air with additional oxygen added, so regular air is 21%. And the MV Fling has the ability to mix nitrox 
on the boat, and so they added additional nitrogen, uh, oxygen to my tank, bringing it up to 32% instead of oxygen instead of the usual 21. colors and the life uh, come across in this video. I recorded it in uh, 4K, well, UHD 60 frames a second, so best watch on a large screen TV if you have it, to get the full effect. <laughs> Missing is the 3D aspect that uh, I recall from this dive being there in person. Those pipes disappearing down into the depths there, like that, uh, so vast. It was, uh, look at that, all the way down, so you can't see it anymore. It was a very, very thrilling experience. I loved this dive. Quite the sense of uh, megalophobia on occasion with the vast vastness of the uh, of the rig structure all around. And the antidote to that was to uh, focus on the little all the little fish that were living all around. Trying to use my flashlight there to capture the beauty of all the colours from close up that the depth of the water. Uh, takes out. Very beautiful. of the uh, stillness in the water. Uh, previously when I've dived the, uh, this rig there was quite a current cutting across it which uh, makes for a very challenging dive by comparison. The uh, fish all hide behind the tall vertical pillars which is uh, really the only easy place to enjoy the dive from as well because it's uh, so much work. Out, out, out in the open, open water. Otherwise, definitely uh, not as easy to do this finning about as you see here, including uh, through the centre of the structure. That's the centre of it right there. Just room to squeeze through. If I'm careful. And I look down into the abyss. That was a, a fabulous feeling. wires and various loose pieces dangling on the structure in a few places. Things fallen off the structure above perhaps. Some wire there. Looks like it uh, fell down long ago and uh, was just left to hang. Gradually, uh, uh, local wildlife has just simply made that their home as well. A 
really was like being in a vast aquarium. And then you look down and then you realise how deep the aquarium is and you look across and you realise how vast the ore rig structure is. Roughly halfway through our dive now. You can see more loose wires dangling down into the abyss there. growth on the rig structure here which was underneath that is large pieces of steel pipe occasionally you'll see bear patches when uh, some of the local fish residents make areas their home And uh, a change of scene there because we changed cameras. The uh, GoPro 11 I was using uh, overheats after around 23 minutes of continuous filming at 60 frames a second. So we're at 25, so the uh, 11 had overheated and so I had switched cameras. So this is now a GoPro 10 that I uh, bought with me in anticipation of the first camera overheating. Just pulled out this one and uh, continued to... Uh, Recording, putting away the 11 rather than wait for it to, uh, to cool down. In my experience, the uh, time it takes to cool down is the time it takes for the GoPro 10 to also overheat after 22 minutes or so. Doesn't happen if I drop the frame weight to 30 frames a second on either camera. I find the 60 frames a second captures much smoother video. Fellow scuba diver and Chama Brian on the right there. Uh, by Chama, I mean that was the uh, scuba diving club that uh, we went with on this trip. Uh, the Central Houston Underwater Mariners. Twelve of us, I think, from Chum were on board the fling from the group out of the 30 on board. My uh, sense of wonder as I was just slowly Finning around here yeah, was just uh, just off the charts. It was just I could not believe what my eyeballs were telling me. Particularly, you can't see it in captured in two D, but in the full three D of uh, actually being there, the uh, you know awareness of how vast the structure was and how deep it went down, plus all the life was there was just continuously amazing. And I hope the uh, camera captures some of what it was actually like to be there. just disappears into the gloom down below with the uh, covered piping close to hand teeming with life <laughs> <laughs> 
Highly, highly recommended if you ever get the opportunity to, to do a dive like this one. It was uh, absolutely one of my absolute favorites. Even the third time around, absolutely wonderful. And I was uh, looking forward to this dive, uh, perhaps most of all, actually. 1600 PSI or so left, so around half my tank. Tend to plan on coming back up at around 800 psi. Started with a little over 3000. And uh, on this dive, I actually came up with a little over a thousand. So, very easy and comfortable dive. Easy, comfortable 45 minutes. Would not have been so comfortable, at least for me, had I not been wearing my dry suit. That much I do know. I think my buddy Ken is pointing down below at some sharks. That were, yep, you can just see it way below. See the shark in the middle of the screen there? There are a number of them down there. He's indicating shark symbol with his uh, hand there. Not dangerous if we leave them alone. And very, very cool to see.
At this point I thought it might be fun to swim through the middle of the structure once again. This time do a selfie with me and uh, my buddy Ken who was right close behind me as you can see, as per usual. Try and capture the scene. from behind there. I decided to swim for some uh, the sunny side of the rig. See the, it's a little brighter here. You can see the surface behind me, 50 feet above. Much brighter and sunnier on this side. Thank <laughs> you. 
this point, I was checking with my buddy Ken with hand signals, asking how much air he had, and uh, we had agreed to uh, circle round to try and find the line back up to the fling, and uh, follow it back up for our three minute safety stop. I wasn't sure where it was, we knew it was roughly at this depth, because we made a note of that when we uh, came down to the rick. And we knew it was tied off on one side, so simply a matter of getting to the right depth and then doing a circuit of the rig until we come across it. Bright yellow, so hard to miss. Uh, that isn't it. That's something else wrapped around the rig. That's my buddy Ken. Me marveling at just all the myriad of fish caught in the sunlight there. had spotted that in fact the line back up to the thing is pretty much right there and was waiting for me to notice. So there was actually no need to swim around the rig until we found it because really we already had. So just a few minutes of uh, enjoying the scenery uh, at this point. There you can see the line, the yellow line tied off just there. He had spotted it before me, just waiting for me to notice. I realised it was there, and uh, yeah, there it is, that bright yellow. You can see some other divers uh, hanging off of it, so the objective now is to swim round. Indicated, yeah, to my buddy, shall we uh, head on up? He was like, yeah, okay, might as well. Like I say, and so there's the, and that's a view from after we were starting to come up right there, just looking back at the vast majesty of that, of the underside of that colossal oil rig, going all the way down 300 plus feet down. And the small divers for scale back there. All the way to the surface. That's my buddy Ken. Quick selfie before turning the camera off for the dive. And then Ken grabbed some video of me heading back to the surface. So you can see how my left hand here, I was trying not to tug the line. Like I say, there's a, the, f the boat was not um, fixed in place, um, anchored or anything, so there was a chance that if we tugged on that line, we would actually move the boat and pull it towards the rig. So you can see how I put fingers around the outside of the rope and use it as a guide and just maintain my buoyancy and swam rather than swam along the line and used it to guide me rather than use the line to uh, pull me didn't pull myself on it get into the surface and uh, there we go let's see if we can see the fling there she is thanks very much for watching Please don't forget to like and subscribe.